Welcome back to another quick installment of Julian's Random Projects. I'm getting around to doing something I've been meaning to do for the last like year or two, which was adding this custom battery pack to an existing baby monitor that we've got here at the house. And I've been procrastinating and also some of the printers I was messing around with weren't perfectly dialed in uh, or didn't have end stops were messing up. I had a lot of excuses to not do this. Uh, but now uh, I've got the Robo 3D dialed in and, and I thought now is as good a time as any to crank this one out. So the process was pretty simple. First, I took off the existing battery pack or the battery door, uh, which uh, usually held three AAA batteries. And the most those were uh, available was like 800 milliamps. But what it came with was like 300 to 500 milliamps. So it was designed to be usable off of the charger, uh, for, you know, walk around the house, maybe make it through the one night or something like that. But it wasn't working for us because it wouldn't make it through being off its charger for a nap and um, through the night. Um, so we moved the charger base to one side of the, our, our bed, but then depending on who's on baby duty that night or who's you know, gonna respond to a 3 a.m. wake up, um, sometimes it's on my side, which doesn't have the charger. And then this thing beeps at me in the middle of the night that the battery is going dead, which is rude and annoying. So, um, my first step was to put larger capacity triple A's in and that didn't work. And the latest step was to modify this door to then hold on to this behemoth of an 18650 now on the backside. It's missing its door as you can see because uh, it's going to be a cap that goes on uh, later. I'm going to just use some acetone glue. Uh, let me acetone glue. I'll splice in some acetone glue here. It's just ABS dissolved in acetone, um, or some people call it ABS glue. Uh, once the, um, it's, you see here, it's, getting, it's becoming liquid. Uh, and then once the acetone evaporates, it just leaves behind the plastic and it bonds really, really well. Uh, so that'll go on there after I'm confident I've got this all figured out. So the steps were, as I was mentioning, to uh, measure something like this up with a set of calibers Take those measurements and drop them into your favorite uh, 3D uh, software like CAD or a, a nice free one is 123D Design, uh, which is made by the same people that make uh, AutoCAD. And uh, once you've got your design happy, you're happy with that, the measurements match up, it looks about right. Um, w one of my tips there would be to create an element of the parts that you're going to use. So in this one, I've got both a battery and a little charge controller here. When you're designing, if you know the dimensions of that charge controller and your battery, you can basically build things around them or drop them in place and get a good idea of like what would need to happen. So in my case, I saw like oriented this way. I knew that running the battery up lengthwise was going to keep me from being able to lay it down like this if I wanted to, uh, which I do often to set it on a desk or set it up like this. And, uh, to keep that happening, um, I needed to make this go lengthwise. So you'll have your design, you'll be happy with it. Then you can send it, send it straight off to the printer, have it printed out, then check it for fitment. Uh, you'll, there'll probably be some amount of cleanup, hence uh, you know some of the little sanding tools and stuff like that. Uh, the next step would be to wire it up, drill some holes where you need them, run the wires to the appropriate places, and then be done with that. Uh, the next step in my case was adding in the uh, the charge controller. Again, this is a lithium ion battery. You want to be safe with that. And so I bought a uh, made for the purpose battery charger that takes uh, micro USB in. That looks something like that. So now, now it just charges over uh, micro USB instead of uh, being placed into the dock. And the last thing to do would be to button it up like this. I was even able to find a uh, the the dimensions for the uh, the screw hole, and I was able to reuse that that, hold, that uh, set screw that holds this plate in. So now it's nice; it's on there really nice and secure. Uh, if you happen to own model AC1100 or 1100 of the Angel Care baby monitor, and you also want to do this upgrade, I'll go ahead and upload the the 3D model of this. Um, 
uh, to Thingiverse. I'll try and provide a link below. So that's it. That's this mod done. Um, it's a lot like the IKEA lamp, if you guys saw that earlier on my channel, uh, except this is something that the wife and I use every single day um, to keep an eye on the kid and see if she's getting to sleep or you know, if she's sleeping soundly or if she's scratching at herself because she's got an itch or something. You know, sometimes kids are you know, scratching at their leg and they make it a lot worse than it needs to be. So this will let you keep an eye on that. Um, and also, <laughs> it's got a little walkie-talkie function, so you can press this and talk to them. <laughs> it's a, a little creepy, uh, but if, if get, the kid gets used to it, and you'll be all right. You can tell him to be quiet and go to sleep. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this um, 3D printing, uh, I think it's probably one of the first 3D printing videos I've done. Uh, but it's been a hobby of mine for many years now, um, so I'll probably do more and more of those. Um, as time goes by. If you, if you enjoyed this, uh, feel free to subscribe and like the video, and I'll try and do more of them. <laughs>